Ladies and gentlemen, we are on our way to Medeva. Uh, in a few minutes we'll be there. And uh, a restaurant, which is called Hard Jdutna. Uh, it's actually by, was built by the Christian community. You know the Christian community? Uh, in 1880, of course we'll be talking in details about these days and so on, who conquered our region, when we are going to talk about the history of Petra and Jawash. But actually, uh, Medeba before 1880 was not inhabited. And in 1880, the Latin patriarch in Jerusalem with the French consul in Jerusalem had persuaded Mithat Pasha to give the permission for 2,000 Arab Christians to emigrate from Kirak in the south, you know, Kirak in the south, to come and live in Medeba here. And at that time, the Turks, they won't let the Christians build the church. So they start building their houses. They start with their houses. But the Turks, they won't let the Christians build the church unless if they found an old church so that they could build their, their new church on the top. Now, when you talk about an area was not inhabited in 1880. Which one? Is it loud? Is it better to hold the mic like this? Like this better? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Now, so in 1880, uh, when Christians they start building their houses in Medeba, and uh, but they won't let them build a church unless they found an old church so that they could build their new church on the top. 1884, a monk in Medeba, he had found a map, and this map we shall see it after lunch. The map. Actually, it was a floor of a Byzantium church. The map was about 25 meters length. You know, 25 meters, about 75 feet length, with six meters wide, and about 18 feet wide. And at that time, the important for the Christians is to build a church. Did not take good care of the map. So a Greek Orthodox Patriarch from Jerusalem, he did send an architect with workers to build the Greek Orthodox Church. Now while they were building the church, stones used to fall on the map. They did damage and destroyed most of the map. But what's left about six meters altogether, you know, about 18 feet altogether. Where we'll find out today with the 18 feet, it will give us a very good example of the Holy Land, part of Jordan, and Egypt. Geographically, the map is full of mistakes. They meant by the map, it's a biblical map. And this map, it did help archaeologists to excavate in the Holy Land, in Jordan, and in Egypt, in several places. It did help archaeologists to find the Cardo in Jerusalem. It did help archaeologists to find Bethany beyond the Jordan. It's the only map. So it seems to me that on your itinerary in Jordan, you are visiting unique sites. Even that we do have 28,000 archaeological sites. Bethany, there is one place where Jesus was baptized. Mount Nebo, there is one place where Moses stood facing the promised land. The map, it's the only map that was found. Petra, it is a unique place. It's a world heritage site. It's one of the new seven wonders of the world. What we are going to see tomorrow, Makeros, one place where John the Baptist was beheaded. It's the place where Salome should return. Even on our way to Jawash, we'll be passing the Jabok River, the place where Jacob wrestled with the angel of God. And the angel of God, he blessed Jacob by changing his name from Jacob to Israel. In more details on these sites one by one. Just be guys, we are not allowed to exchange inside the church, which is a great idea. 
since about three years ago. Now, I hope in the past past year, when I was talking about this map, that this map, by the way, that goes back to the 6th century AD, about 570 AD. And this map was a floor of a church. But, as I did mention that when the Christian communities, they settled in Medeba, at that time, the Turks, they wanted the Christians build the church, unless if they found an old church. And when you talk to people in 1880, in an area that was not inhabited, you ask them to build the church on the ruins of an old church, or a Christian church, which means that they have to find out the church goes back to the early, early experience, which means the Byzantine period. Now, while they were building the church, stones, stones used to fall on the map that they damaged and destroyed most of the map. And what slip is only about six meters altogether. Where you'll find out with the six meters, it will give us a very good example about the Holy Land. That's the Holy Land. Jordan and Egypt. Sometimes my people says, oh, did the, the Byzantium, Byzantium, they didn't know what, where is the north, where is the east? Because when you step inside, you look up there, that's the east. Should be the north nowadays. No, no, they know about the east, they know about the south, they know about everything. Wow. But until about five centuries ago, when they used to draw a map, always the north, east. or the east, I mean, is up there where the north now, where wow. we draw maps. Now, where is the west? The north and the south. Now, Moses, when he left Egypt with the children of Israel, he was trying to take a permission from the five kingdoms on the king's highway. Valleys and rivers were the boundary between one kingdom and another. Thank you, sir. Very good. Okay, hey, hey. Now, this is the Hassa Valley, where there is the phosphate mine. Now, biblical name of Hassa is the Zare, and the Zare that was the border between the Edomites kingdom in the south and the Moabites kingdom in the north. This is the city of Kerak. You know, Kerak is the present name. Biblical name of Kerak is Kir Moab, and that was the capital of the Moabites. Mm. And that's our Grand Canyon, mm. the Armour Valley. And that was a border between the Moabites kingdom in the south and the Amorites kingdom where we are in the north. These are main springs, M-A-I-N, the hot springs. Hmm. When Herod the Great, he used to travel from Jerusalem to Makeros, that's the fortress of Makeros or Makeros. 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 And Makeros, it's a fortress was built and was used by Herod the Great. Later on, was used by Herod Antipas. We are going there the day after tomorrow. It is the place where, later on, John the Baptist was in prison. And the crazy one would be able to climb. Exactly. But only the crazy one. Yeah, only one. Only. Only one. <laughs> <laughs> the only one's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is the fortress of Makeros. Of Makeros. Mena is not on the map. This city was damaged while building the church. Because at that time, they did not knew the value of it. You know, For them, it was the most important to build the church, to start worshipping, praying. That was the reason, you know, they not taking good care of the map. And this is the River Jordan, the Dead Sea. And you can see the St. Peter fish. Did you have St. Peter fish in Tiberia? And when the fish, they reached the Dead Sea here, they discovered that there is no life in the Dead Sea. So you could see this fish, it turned back. Yes, scary. Yes, and when yes. I say scary, I mean it. When you step inside, you look on the fish, her eyes get bigger. Now, this is Beit Abara. The crossing place where it's believed in this area, yeah, in this oh, area oh, oh. where excavation was made in 1997 and they did found Bethany, the place where John the Baptist was beheaded. Oh. Sorry, the place where we have been this morning, the place where Jesus Christ was baptized by John the Baptist. Now, all buildings on the map with red roof, it's Byzantium churches, except this church here. It's a Byzantium church that have 12 white round stones. Now, we don't know the 12 white round stones. Do they represent the 12 tribes of Israel or the 12 apostles? Maybe one of them, maybe both. Yeah? The city of palm trees. Jericho. That's it, Jericho. Here we can see the, that's Jerusalem. Yeah? The Holy Sepulchre Church in Jerusalem. You can see it, I think, much better over here. That's the Holy Sepulchre Church in Jerusalem. Wow. The paved road, the Roman road, the coronated street, which is well known under the name of the Cardo. 
when we go to Javash, yeah? after four days from now, the Roma city, we are going to walk on a cargo in a very good condition. And this map, as I did mention before, it did help archaeologists to find the cargo. The white line here, that's Jaffa Gate, that goes to Jaffa. Oh. St. Stephen's Gate, I think better you could see it here. Yeah. And up there, that's the Church of Gethsemane. Yeah. Damascus Gate. You know, it was named Damascus Gate because of Saul of Tarsus, who became St. Paul. He went with a big army to kill the Christians in Damascus. So it was named Damascus Gate since that time, you know. Samaria Mountains. Neapolis, a city called Neapolis. Nowadays, present Nablus in the West Bank. Yeah? Wow. All these names have been translated. Among them, it had the names of the tribes of Israel. Above my finger here, that's the tribe of Benjamin or Benjamin, <coughs> the youngest sons of Jacob. The tribe of Dan. That's what's left from Ephraim or Ephraim. Okay? Bethlehem. The Nativity Church in Bethlehem. The Shepherd Field. Beth Zachariah. Because Somebody was saying where Judea is. Judea. Yes, Judea. Uh, and, and in Hebrew here, Beit Zachariah, which is in Hebrew, we could read the names of the prophets, which is actually the tombs of the prophets. The first one here is Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, and Jacob. The city of Ashdod, the seaport of Ashdod, city and seaport of Ashdod, seaport of Ashkelon, which means this area is the Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. What left from the Mediterranean is only this small part. So when you step inside, you can see the small part over here. 1986, a Greek archaeologist, he did excavate in the southeast of the Dead Sea. He did found a place called Zora. Because of this map, he did excavate where the palm trees are on a hill. He did found the Byzantium church was built for a memorial of luck. Then in front where the altar is, he did found a cave. Possibly that's the cave where Lot with his two daughters, with his two daughters took refuge. Okay? The Nile and Delta in Egypt, Mount Sinai. In this area is St. Catherine Church in Egypt. Wow. Where sometimes tourists wow. or pilgrims, about 2 a.m., they go up to Mount Sinai, the place where Moses received the Ten Commandments, where also they could see the sunrise on the Sinai Desert. Wow. That's the Sinai Desert. Memphis, the seaport where the Red Sea is and Sinai. And these are three fortresses in the Arab Valley, Roman and Byzantium period. And they were built for protecting the traders and the caravans. A city here ends with ZA, Gaza. Even Gaza in Greek ends with ZA. When we go to Umarshas, we might see the 15 cities among them is Gaza. Philadelphia, Medaba, and we'll talk more about this subject. Now, you like to add any word, dear Father? I just wanted to word about the disfigured uh, images. Mm -hmm. that if you can see here, and we're going to see it on several mosaics, right over here, you see the boat, mm -hmm. I think you see the mast, mm -hmm. but you can see figures of a man, you can see lives over here. Mm -hmm. But the figures themse themselves are, were taken out and replaced with various tessers. Any ideas who did that? No. no. The iconoclasts. Iconoclasts. Oh. And price goes to... Bula. So, because images were prohibited, but mosaics were too costly to destroy, so in many churches they would destroy the mosaics and just would fill them out with various tesseract. Huh. Mm. as not to have the images. So we can here mm. have a historical witness of an iconoclast controversy that targeted, that targeted the, you know, the images. You know, initially, it was, initially it was saying that you know, veneration of the icon, uh, mosaics and such have to be in a healthy form. So it's okay to venerate, but maybe not you know, kissing it until nothing, till to dust. But it ended up even going in the churches and mosaics were destroyed and replaced with tessers. Why is it were replaced with tessers? Because the structure of mosaic is such that it even can withstood the earthquakes. It would be not mm -hmm. even. But if you begin to take star pieces out, the in inside pressure begins, well, it, it, you know, cracks would go on and the tessers would get loose. 
So, but we're going to see in some churches where exactly the same thing was done, and even times to the faces of lions, antelopes, and deaf and humans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, and this is a map of, and actually when we were in uh, Jerusalem, when we were walking on the Via della Rosa, when we went into Le Fostraton, uh, the uh, remains of Antonio Fortress, I show you that yeah, image. Mm -hmm. This is approximately the life-size copy, and also in mosaic, wow. of what you want to see in the church. Okay? Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I think our timing is so good, because usually at 5 o'clock, they, they, they don't let people enter into the church. But even that, if you ask me about it, we could stay more. But, uh, Even the city Karak in the Bible, it's under three different names, which is having like Kercha or Kirharis or Kir Moab, the capital of the Moabites. And Medeba mentioned at the Stell of Mesha, you know, the Stell, which is a black basalt stone here. Yeah. And uh, nowadays you could see it were in the Louvre Museum in Paris, in France. And on the Stell, it's mentioned Medeba. It's mentioned also in the Old Testament about King Mesha and about the Stel. Now, Me Deva, which is the name of this city, it's actually three words in Aramaic, means the city of fruits. That's the meaning, city of fruits or the springs of fruits. Break. You won't miss anything because all these things uh, during the day uh, will be passing. And but right now we'll give you a break where you could have a siesta after the long day and having lunch. And, uh, maybe I will awake you five minutes before we reach at the rest stop. Or if you'd like to have tea, coffee, we could. Okay. Then uh, after the rest stop, as I'll be sure that everybody is awake, I'll be having a word about timing for tomorrow, what are we going to see, and uh, what's the best to enjoy Petra, type of transports in Petra, okay? Is there any question right now? Well, every 
one US dollar, okay, every one US dollar makes 0 0.7 of a dinar, which means if you find something, the cost of it, seven dinars, which means 10 US dollar. Okay. Now, for easy calculation, you know, as the dollar is equal to what? Or the dinar is equal exactly to one dollar, 43 cents. For easy calculation, a dollar and a half makes a dinar, okay? One and a half dollar, one dinar, for easy calculation, when you convert it and so on. But by the way, all places where, you, where we are going, they accept dollars, you know? So you don't need to change to local currency. They don't take shekels here, right? Well... You may find places take on shekels, yeah? Just kidding, just a joke. Why not? <laughs> Let him try. He wants to stay in Jordan. You want to stay in Jordan? You're most welcome, sir. You could stay in Jordan till I show you all places where accept shekels. There are very few, but you need to spend more time in Jordan. <laughs> now, uh, by the way, uh, I've been asking a question about several people asking about shopping, buying things, you know. Now, let me make it clear. Places where we did stop here, they have things which is made in Jordan, but most of the stuff it's not made in Jordan. Uh, it's the same in Petra. We have things which is made in Jordan representing Jordan. Now, tomorrow, of course, I'll be talking in more details about this thing, but let's talk about buying and things just to make it clear. You may find sometimes people they sell elephants. Thank you, sir. We don't have elephants in Jordan. But let's say you may find something you like it, you want to buy it, but be sure that's not something representing Jordan. But you may find people sometimes would like to have a collection of elephants or sometimes people collecting stones or uh, stands.